All right, so when would you ever need to add or subtract two polynomial expressions in real life? Um, depends on what you mean by real life. Um, I take that to mean you're trying to describe an actual situation mathematically, and you need to solve you need to solve a problem based in reality um, mathematically. So, for example. Uh, meaning it's not just numbers, that the numbers mean something. So there's a couple of examples that I thought of um, in which y you would need this skill or you could approach them from this perspective. And I'll, I'll let you understand these two problems and then, you know, take it from there. Um, so one, one situation I'm imagining is suppose you are shooting things into the air you know, like you do, uh, let's say pumpkins, no, let's say rockets, two rockets in the air, um, but, so one of them you're starting pretty low to the ground, but with a lot of force, so it has a higher initial velocity, and one of the rockets you're shooting, you're starting off higher up in the air, like maybe on a hill or something, um, but with less force, and you're interested in knowing how far apart vertically the two things are if you shoot them at the same time. You want to write an equation that says, that tells you at any given point of time how far apart vertically are these two projectiles. Okay? Um, so here's the graph of, of the two projectiles. So here is the height above the ground um, so 10 meters, 20 meters, 30 meters, 40 meters. Um, maybe I should label those meters. Uh, let's see. Yeah. And then this is time in seconds. Tim, not Tim, it's time. Time in seconds. So here's where we start. You know, after one second, here's where they are. After two seconds, here's where they are. Three seconds, etc. All right, so say you want to write an equation that tells you how far apart they are vertically. Um, because maybe you want to find out when do they crash into each other. Like, you're really interested in knowing this. Well, in, in order to know that, maybe you want to uh, write an equation that tells you when that happens. You know, in other words, if you write an equation that shows the distance between the two projectiles, uh, you can solve it for when it is equal to zero, meaning the distance between them is zero, i.e. they've just smashed into each other, right? All right, so that's the exercise here. So the equation for this first guy is negative 9.8 times t squared plus 20t plus 30. Um, and that's that's your general equation for, or that's uh, that form of an equation is, is for the distance uh, above the ground um, when you're shooting something off the surface of the earth. This part of it is the acceleration due to gravity. This part is saying what your initial velocity is. So this means 20 meters per second. So we're shooting this guy at 20 meters per second. Uh, and this is how high above the ground you start. Right? Okay, so and then um, the second one is, uh, you know, acceleration due to gravity is the same. This is both, we're both on planet Earth. Um, initial velocity is 30 meters per second and the initial height is five meters, All right? So this guy's starting lower down, but we're shooting him at a um, higher velocity, and we want to see kind of when they catch up. Basically, when yeah, we we want to see. We're gonna pretend that we can shoot them directly on top of each other. Um, well, I don't know. We we basically want to find out when vertically they are. Um, the distance between them is zero. Okay, I don't know. Maybe this is a contrived situation, but work with me here. All right, so what we can do is, so we've got an equation for this, and we've got an equation for this. Well, what's the difference, uh, distance between them? Uh, you, well, you just subtract uh, this from this, right? If, I, if I've got something that's this tall, and I've got something that's this tall, and I want to know uh, what the difference between them is, uh, I take, you know, let's say that's, 10 meters, and that's 4 meters. Well, this is 
six meters, therefore, right? Um, this is just slightly, slightly more complicated because this is, um, you know, an equation that describes this. It's not just a number, okay? So I'm going to subtract this from this, and that'll give us the equation that tells us how far apart vertically these two projectiles are. So I'm going to subtract um, these uh, equations. So we've got so h1 minus h2, so i.e. the the distance between them is okay. So negative 9.8 t squared minus negative 9.8 t squared. So minus a negative um, would actually mean you're adding that. So um, you're taking the negative something and adding the positive of it. So this term just cancels out. So that's nice. Uh, then we've got 20t minus um, 30t would be negative 10t. So you, you add or subtract like terms. So this, these are like terms because they're um, they both include t squared. These are like terms because they include just t, and these are like terms because they're both constants. Okay, so 30 um, minus uh, 5 is 25. Um, yeah, so this would be our equation that tells us for for a given time how far apart these two curves are from one another. Yeah? All right. So, um, we could solve that. Um, so we could... Uh, so we could say, all right, we want the distance to be zero. Let's solve for when the distance is zero. So we could say zero, switch colors to indicate that I'm doing something cool. Zero equals negative 10t plus 25. Okay, just want to get t by itself, minus 25, minus 25. So negative 25 is equal to negative 10t. Divide both sides by negative 10 divide by negative 10. Uh, so negative 25 divided by um, negative 10 is, what is that, 2 and a half? Yeah, 2.5 seconds. So after 2 and a half seconds, these projectiles are at equal heights. The, different, the distance between them is 0. All right, kind of see where we're going with that. Um, all right, let's look at this second example. Suppose you are building a cabin that will be two times longer than it is wide. So I'm going to start, I'm going to draw a diagram here. Um, let's move this up here. So, okay. All right, so I want to build a cabin that's two times longer than it's wide. Let's make it brown because it's a cabin. Um, you want to surround it with a two foot wide path of gravel, right? You know, maybe to catch the, the rain runoff or something like that. Uh, write a function for the area of the gravel path in terms of the width of the cabin. Um, so maybe you want to figure out the area of the gravel path because you're, maybe you've got some gravel available and you want to figure out, well, if I design the cabin this way, well, would I have enough gravel to you know, surround it with a two-foot path, or am I going to have to adjust that? All right, so uh, I want a cabin that's two times longer than it is wide, because it looks nice that way. Okay, I mean, you know, I'm kind of simplifying things for the sake of this example. So we don't know how wide or how long it's going to be, but, but if it's x feet wide, it'll be 2x um, feet long. And actually, let's just put that inside there because I want to draw the, the gravel. Um, now, we want a gravel path. Uh, let's make that gray. Okay. Um, we want a gravel path. I'm just going to make that bigger so it's easier to see. Is this interesting to you? I hope, hope so. Um, okay. 
I feel like I ramble a lot. But hopefully this is making sense. Okay. So my cabin is going to be x by 2x feet. The gravel path um, is going to be um, it's going to be I'm going to add 2 feet you know to both right in in every direction so it's 2 feet around. Okay. So I want to I want to function um for the area of the gravel path. So I want really I want the area of this outside piece. So if you look at it, um, what I really want is what I what I can do is if I write something that describes the area of the big rectangle, and I subtract the area of the small rectangle, the cabin. All I'm left with is the area of the gravel. Right, in fact, yeah, right. So big rectangle minus small rectangle uh, means you're just left with that difference, right? So let's write um, an equation for the area of the big rectangle, and then let's write one for the area of the smaller rectangle, and then we'll subtract them, ding, 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 and then we'll have an equation. Okay. So what are the dimensions of the big rectangle? Well, if this is x, then, um, and I'm adding 2 feet, adding 2 feet, this dimension is x plus 4. And then this dimension is, is 2x plus 2 plus 2. So this is 2x plus 4. So if I wanted to take the area of that rectangle, I would just do x plus 4. Times 2x plus 4. That's the um, area of the big rectangle. Um, so we could just FOIL this or distribute this out. x times 2x is 2x squared. x times 4 is 4x. Uh, 4 times 2x is 8x. 4 times 4 is 16. So let me write, rewrite that as it's on. So 2x squared um, plus 4x plus 8x. Let's combine those like terms as uh, 12x plus 16. So that's the area of the um, the large rectangle in terms of the width of the cabin x. Um, so we could we could basically this allow us to calculate the area and we can try different values of x, you know, if we're trying to design this cabin and we can see what happens to the area um, of the big rectangle. Okay, but we're gonna subtract the area of the cabin because what we what we really want is the area of the gravel path. So the area of the cabin is two x times x. So that's 2x squared. So if we subtract these two expressions, 2x squared minus 2x squared is gone. So all I'm left with is the area of the gravel path is um, 12x plus 16. There. So that gives us, so, you know, back to the application. Maybe I'm designing my cabin, and I and like, oh, well, maybe maybe I want a cabin that's 12 feet um, wide. What, would I have enough gravel to do a gravel path? Well, uh, you know, 12 times 12 is 144, plus 16 um, is what, 150, 160 square feet. So then I would ask myself, do I have 160 square feet of gravel? Could I get 160 square feet of gravel, et cetera? All right? Uh, so those are two situations where, um, actually, in both cases, you're subtracting polynomials, adding, you know, same idea. And, um, yeah, so have fun with it. And hopefully this helps kind of tie this to the real world or kind of real world type problems instead of just numbers. All righty. Later.